Hey guys, Dan here. Uh, today I'm here with Colton Huber. He is the junior partner with the uh, World Financial Group. We're just going to get a little bit of insight in how the company works, uh, what it's all about, and uh, some success tips as well. So before we get started, uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, a little bit of backgrounds, stuff like that. Definitely, for sure. So I, I actually don't come from a financial background at all. I come from a trades background myself. My, my mom's a firefighter, my dad owns an ironworking company. So my whole life, all they ever taught me was go work really hard, get your hands dirty and you'll be fine. So that's what I did. Came out of high school, went straight into trades, uh, became an electrician. I loved it. Uh, for anyone who's ever worked in trades, they, they know electrical is kind of a little bit cushy, right? You're indoors uh, the whole time. It's not as hard work as some of the other ones and you get paid good money. But what I, what I started to see was a bit of a dead end for myself. Um, because in trades, you essentially have two options. You get your, your journeyman ticket and then you go work for someone else your whole life or you go start your own company. And I saw, I didn't want to work for someone else my whole life and then I saw how much stress my dad was under running a company. Some of the issues you have to deal with, right? Like employees, um, being there on time, right? Getting jobs done properly, having enough jobs to do. Um, it, it seemed quite stressful. So I wasn't sure if it was for me. Uh, I felt a little bit stuck. And then to be honest, I almost just stumbled into World Financial Group. My grandpa, he's the only guy in our family who ever dealt with finances. We would, if we had taxes or investments to do, we'd always go see him uh, out in Regina. I am from Saskatchewan. I was born in, in, born in Regina. Don't hold it against me, but I've been raised here in Calgary. And um, yeah, so we'd always go see him, but he's, he's actually got cancer now, unfortunately. Um, and uh, he's coming here, it's, it's the end of his battle with that. But what, uh, what I'm super fortunate for is that he started teaching the younger generation, like, look, we need to start learning about this stuff, right? Finances are super important. I don't think we, we get to learn anything about it, which is crazy when we grow up. Um, so I, I bought some books, like, like some ambitious kids do, and I was like, hey, I'll be an investor, I'll trade stocks, and I'll make millions of dollars. That didn't really go anywhere. Um, I was a football player as well, so me and books were not getting along too well at the time. But I ended up tossing those out, and then I went to the fire department for a family dinner one time, and a lady, well, sorry, my mom was working with a gentleman at the department, and his girlfriend at the time worked here. And they said, hey, we teach people about money. And I thought that was fantastic. So I was trying to learn. I came in, I saw a little presentation, thought it was cool. Um, if I could learn a little bit about money myself and help myself and then maybe help some other people, I was pretty happy. So I started there. Actually, I ended up starting with the company part-time just so I could learn a little bit more about how money worked. Uh, I was working electrical all during the day. I think it's a phenomenal part to our company where we can allow people to start part-time uh, to learn the industry. And then after about nine, 10 months, I was making almost the same here part-time as I was a full-time electrician. So I said, hey, let's see what I can really do. Um, I ended up quitting my electrical job. I quit a, a very successful football career and uh, decided to go full-time with this and, and I love it. I, I haven't turned back. It's been April, actually, a month from now is gonna be full to, uh, three years that I've been here and it's, I just, I love what we do. I think it's amazing what we're able to do for our clients and the opportunity is, is phenomenal. That was actually my, my second question, uh, how did you start working here? Yeah, um, yeah. let's uh, jump into, when you first started here, uh, what was your like, first position? What were some uh, like things you had to do? For sure, for sure. So when, when someone starts with us, most people who start with us actually don't come from a financial background at all, like myself. Um, so we teach everybody everything from the ground up. So when someone starts with us, they're, they're a training associate. Um, they got to get a government license. They got to go through a bit of a training process. Once they start learning the products, they're, they're building up a clientele, they're getting referrals, that kind of stuff. Um, then we, we get them kind of independent and get them out on their own so that they're, they're learning quicker. I, I find that the best way to learn is to go out and maybe stumble a couple of times and then you learn exactly what you need to do right away. So that was, that was me. I went on some training appointments, started getting training, got my government license relatively quickly, got my first promotion within the first month. And um, yeah, I was just super coachable. And, and went from there. I, I had a lot of drive. I wanted to win. Um, come from a sports background, so I'm quite competitive, and uh, and worked really hard. And, and it's been good. I'm the youngest junior broker um, in the entire office, and I'll be the youngest senior partner in uh, most of Alberta here in the next couple of months. Well, congratulations. Thank you. What does a typical day consist here? Yeah. So so a typical day for me. Um, I won't go over today because I'm going to be playing a little bit of hockey, which is going to be fun. Uh, Fridays we like to take our afternoons and and play an hour of hockey uh, sponsored by our product partners, which I think is really cool. But a typical day for me, I'll go through like a Monday. I, I get up in the morning, 
I'm usually up about five o'clock. I go for a, for a 45 minute walk or run in the morning. And then I come home, grab my stuff. I go to the gym for, for about an hour or so. I like to be in the office about 8, 8.30 in the mornings. Um, and then on Mondays, we have some product training that we do. So from 10 to 11, we do some, we have product partners come in, teach us about their products. We also do some leadership development at that time as well. Uh, and then I have a couple leadership meetings afterwards just to get ready for the week. And then my appointments usually start after one. Uh, I take the, the afternoon just to kind of get caught up with everything, have some lunch, and then my appointments start after one. And depending on the day, I could be doing six appointments. I could only have two that day. It all depends on uh, on the schedule that I've booked. But uh, we go out into the field. We like to have families come here, see our office, show them what it is we do. But then as well, if you know, kids have or people have kids, and it's hard for them to get out of the house sometimes, we we make the exception and we go see them at their home as well. So you mentioned uh, drive is very important. Mm -hmm. What are some other skills uh, that, that you need in this kind of position? Yeah, in this in this industry and with our company. I think some of the most important skills that, that someone could have or uh, could work to have is is being coachable, right? That's one of the best things. And I, I found myself, I had a, uh, an advantage there, playing sports my whole life. I just, if someone gives me some instructions, I act, right? Act at the speed of instruction. So being coachable is huge. Um, having, having high integrity, both with yourself and with other people around you, right? Being an honest person. Um, those are some of the three big characteristics that I look for somebody. But uh, obviously they gotta be self-motivated. Right, we're here to, to help encourage people and develop their skills and, and teach them how they can be a little bit better at in certain aspects. But at the end of the day, it's up to them. Right, we're going to give them a, a good environment and a good example. But at the end of the day, they have to want to work hard. They have to want to win for themselves. Um, so they have to be self motivated as well, which is exciting. What uh, what is a challenge uh, that you had to overcome in the past? Mm. A challenge I'd overcome in the past with, with in this industry or just in, in general. Let's let's keep it to this industry. Yeah. Something you have to overcome, for learn, sure. and adapt. Definitely. So yeah, one of the biggest challenges for me, and everybody has their own challenges when they start with this. You know, some people have three, four kids and a full time job. They got to figure out how to work their schedule properly. Um, for me, my challenge was obviously I'm, I'm a little younger in this industry, right? When I started three years ago, I was even more uh, young, and I don't have a any hair on my face. Got a bit of a baby face, but um, so that was my big challenge was getting people to take me seriously. Right, understand that yes, I do know what I'm talking about. But uh, what I found is if you dress the part, right, you show people you're serious and you bring the knowledge to the table and you're confident in your skills and abilities, that helps you get over those hurdles. Uh, that certainly helped me. And uh, if you just keep working hard and showing people the value that you can bring to them, it's uh, it's not, not too much of a problem. Uh, is there anything you would have done differently if you had the chance? Anything I would have done differently? It's hard, like looking back, there's always like, oh, you, you get a little nitpicky on yourself or you could do this better, you could do that better. Um, I think I would have gotten a little bit more consistent earlier on. Um, in the beginning, I was I was kind of uh, like ebbs and flows, like I was going up, I was going down. But I think I would try to just even it out and be more consistent with my, my morning routines, my schedule, uh, my contacts, my appointments, all that kind of stuff. Um, just to make it a little smoother ride for myself, but that's, that's part of being an entrepreneur. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. As long as you don't let the highs get too high and the lows too low, um, I find if you can be consistent and persistent, you'll you'll do very well. Uh, we were learning, we were reading a book, uh, The Strengths Find It, mm -hmm. and uh, they talk about uh, focusing on strengths over weaknesses. Mm -hmm. In this job, do you get to do what you are best at every day? Yes, yes, I, I believe I believe in that too. I think you. You got to know what your weaknesses are. Um, you don't essentially have to focus on them, but I think you should know what they are. But we definitely play to people's strengths, right? Because everybody is a little bit different. I find one of my my biggest gifts, my biggest strengths, is the fact that I, I am able to bring a lot of energy to people. Right? I'm able to give them energy. I'm, a, I'm very positive, very optimistic all the time, um, and, uh, and I feel like people around me see that and they like that. And that's what I focus on: is just being bringing energy to people, bringing value to them, and seeing how I can help them out. Um, yeah, I think if you dwell on your, your weaknesses for too long, it's gonna slow you down, right? Why, why focus on something that is gonna take much longer for you to change when you can focus on what you're really good at and just absolutely run with it? And then you can find people who compliment you who are good at those things that, that aren't your strengths. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no problem. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Learned a lot.